Good to see you, Brendan. Crestor insert advises not to use with nicotinic acid as it can cause serious side effects. What effects? My A1C has gone from 5.2 to 5.6 since using both. Niacin 500 and Crestor 5 milligrams alternate days. Great question, Brendan. And here's the issue. Both of those. Nicotinic acid, by the way, for those of you that don't know, is nice. And Crestor, most of you should know that that's a statin. So both statins and niacin have a, a side effect of increasing insulin resistance. And that's typical what you've just described there, Brendan. Now, a lot of people say, well, <laughs> therefore, I don't want to take a statin or I don't want to take a niacin. I don't recommend people take a statin or niacin unless they really need it. Now, when do I recommend a statin? If you have plaque, if your body has already formed plaque in the artery wall. At that point, it's really clear. Your body's struggling, it's making plaque, and it's now at risk for heart attack and stroke. When do I recommend niacin? I've got over a dozen videos on niacin. Niacin's a big debate. There's several issues with it. I remember taking my first trials of niacin back in my 40s, and I was in church one day, and I had taken the niacin a couple hours beforehand. I felt like somebody was scalping me, just taking my whole scalp. And that's what happens. Niacin has a reputation for causing flushing. It does that due to a thing called a prostaglandin. Here's what happened. At that point in time, and it still us. Niacin has a great reputation for doing several very positive things. We've talked about the insulin resistance. We've talked about the flushing, but here's what we didn't talk about. Niacin is the only thing that increases HDL, decreases LDL, decreases triglycerides, decreases LP little a. There's very positive things that come out of it. Now, other folks would say, and a lot of docs feel like, oh no, that was disproven. Here's how and why that was disproven. There was a trial called the HPS2 Thrive trial. I think that was the one. That may have been another one, but they put Lepropriant, I think it was Pfizer that did this, put Lepropriant in niacin. Now, why would they do that? The Lepropriant stops that flushing that you get with niacin. What they found was niacin didn't work at that point in that trial. So they threw the baby out with the bathwater, if you know what I mean. If you're from the deep south like I am, the phrase throwing the baby out with the bathwater means basically, you know, you made some changes. You maybe have got rid of some bad stuff, but you got rid of the good stuff as well. And that's exactly what happens with Lepropriant. The chemical additives to quote non-flush niacin tend to also make niacin where it doesn't work. So there are some ways to get niacin. There are a couple of supplements that I've used. Rugby brand, niacin, and endurocin. My patients have tolerated endurocin far better. Now, again, a final thing that we haven't talked about with niacin is it can also cause liver damage. So you get a lot of good things from it. There's a lot of stuff on the internet about it. But just like anything else, don't take it if you don't need it.